Good morning, church family. Good morning, church family. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, well, if you're glad, come on and put a clapping in your hands. How many of us are in pursuit of God this morning? Are we in pursuit? Well, come on, let's chase after him this morning. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands on it. Hallelujah. You're worthy, oh God. Here we go. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. You help me sing that. Come on, say, I'm chasing. I'm, I'm chasing, chasing after you. No matter what, no matter I, what I have to do. Because I need you. I need no you. more. Oh.
whatever it is I'm going through. I just want to be closer to you. God, my heart's desire is to always chase after you. Right here in this moment, can we just begin to chase after him with our lips? With the fruit of our lips, can we lift our hands and just take a moment? Yeah. God, we want nothing but you. Our hearts long for you. Our spirits need you. Every day, every hour. Let us commune with you today. You're worthy, Father. There's no other God like you. Thank you, Lord. Draw me close to you.
get you to lift it up and sing it, saying, Oh, you're all I want. That's so good to him. Come on, say, you're all I ever, you're all I ever needed, you're all I ever needed, you're all I want. Help me know you are near. Yes, Lord. I want you, Jesus. Oh, you're all I want. Yes, Lord. Say, you're all I ever, you're all I ever needed. Nobody else but you, Lord. You're all I want, Jesus. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are near. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. Yes, Lord. Silas to hear from the Holy Spirit.
Now let us declare the last paragraph of Kingdom Praise and Worship together. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us welcome our children's ministry psalmist. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Call the for his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. This is the word of God taken from Psalm 100, verses 1, 2, and 4. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, We thank God for blessing and keeping our singles, married couples, parents, youth, and children, as well as blessing our church family with wisdom, favor, and good success. We thank God for giving our children, youth, and college students wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in all of our classes. We decree that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is family day, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
your favor, God. Your grace and your mercy that are new each and every day. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. shopping for our Thanksgiving promise of giving. And this year, our goal is to help over 500 families, and we need your help to do so. So you can go to your local grocery store and get some sweet potatoes, and then you can also get some corn, and then we have, of course, that mac and cheese, y'all. And what is Thanksgiving without Kool-Aid? So whether you go to your grocery store or whether you get it out your pantry, remember, we are blessed to be a blessing. After shopping, place your donations in the blue bins located at the north and south entrances of the KBC. If you would like to help with sorting and assembling of Thanksgiving baskets, join us at 6 p.m. on Monday, November 18th through Friday, November 22nd. Email ministryconnection at wvmc.com for more information. Now, I know some of you are super busy and don't have time to cook a full Thanksgiving meal. And others of you may just not like cooking. Well, we have something just for you. You can pre-order your Thanksgiving sides and dessert today through Wednesday, November 20th at thepowercenterhouston.com. Orders must be picked up by November 25th between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. at the Power Center. As we continue in the Thanksgiving spirit, join us for a time of worship, thankfulness, testimony, and celebration as we gather together as family and friends our Thanksgiving worship celebration on Wednesday, November 27th at 7 p.m. We will be thanking God for who he is, what he has already done, and what he plans to do in our lives. And if you have a testimony or praise report, you should share it. We have three different ways you can do so. Via video after the worship celebration on the Windsor Village app or on your own social media pages using the hashtag WB Praise Report. The Prayer Institute presents the 8th Annual Prayer Works Luncheon on November 21st at 11.30 a.m. at the Hilton Houston Post Oak. You can purchase tickets at prayerinstitute.com. We invite all the single and married folks to join us for our Legacy Honors Dinner and Dance, honoring couples married for 35 plus years. Join us on November 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Great Room. You can purchase your tickets at kingdombuilders.com. The CEO Ministry presents the Entrepreneur Weekend on December 13th through the 15th. For more information on being a vendor, you can visit our website at kingdombuilders.com. Well, that's it for today. You can stay connected with us via the Windsor Village app, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube by following our account at WV Church Family. We hope to see you at Victory Wednesday Bible Study. Bye! Good morning, people of God. How are y'all doing this morning? Yes, y'all's anointing is shining in here. It's a beautiful, bright, blessed Sunday, isn't it? Yes. 
Well, listen, I just wanted to go over um, a few of the announcements that were already mentioned. If you are a visitor, we have a visitor's reception today available in the room right across from our legacy wall. If you want to know more information about Windsor Village, what we do here as a church family, as y'all see, we have a lot going on at the village and so that you can even meet our pastor. So that's going to be a great opportunity. Also, we want to encourage you to start sharing your testimonies. How many people in here have a testimony? Okay. We want you all to start sharing your testimonies. So go on social media and use the hashtag WV Praise Report. Amen. And now let's welcome our visitors. If you are a visitor, won't you please stand up? Good morning, morning, morning. Make sure you remain standing until you receive a handshake, high five, or holy hug. Also remain standing until you receive a present. And please fill out the visitor's card and place it in the offering envelope when it comes by. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention is our wonderful Thanksgiving service that we're going to be having the Wednesday. It's going to be the day before Thanksgiving. College students, wink, wink. Y'all do not want to miss this. Okay. Yes. Good morning, church family. How many of you have had an opportunity to eat food at the Power Center? Do you enjoy it? Do you like Chef Joseph's cooking? I do too. I tell you what, when I first started working there, I probably put on about 10 pounds in my first few months of working there because Chef feeds me well. Every year, people will ask us, can I get Chef to make this for me for Thanksgiving? Can I get Chef to make this? And usually he doesn't do it. But this year, we got him to agree to offer sides and dessert. So you can do your own turkey, you can do your own ham, but the Power Center is offering half pans that'll feed about nine people of dirty rice, cornbread dressing, greens, yams, and a quart of giblet gravy. Okay. That's, that's your sides package. And then you can also get his signature dish, which is his bread pudding, his New Orleans style bread pudding, which is off the chain. We're offering half pans as well as full pans. So if you will go to the powercenterhouston.com, there'll be a link on our website. You can click it, prepay for your order, and pick it up between Monday the 25th and Wednesday the 27th. Is that all right? Yes. Take some of the work off of you ladies. Just throw Thank a little you. flour on you, you know. There you go. Yeah, you know, yeah. Put a little, a little sweat. Dabble, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like afterwards. Thank you. Okay, great. Now, Windsor Village, it is time for the offering. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, won't you please raise one finger? If you need sermon envelopes or sermon notes, please raise two fingers. Somebody may need. Uh, somebody may need. KBC envelopes too. And if you also need KBC envelopes, please raise three fingers. Good. Right in the nick of time. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Let's thank the Lord for our sister Harris. She does a great <laughs> job. We appreciate you so much. You. Yeah. <laughs> you gone? All right. All right. Well, now you, you can leave. I want to ask uh, Brother Evans. You don't know Brother Evans. I want to ask Brother Evans to come on up on stage while you're preparing your uh, envelopes. Lord, how many folk have been blessed by the YMCA anywhere at any time while you're growing up or even now? So uh, this is Brother Evans, who's the new director of the YMCA right next door in our hood. And uh, we, had a, we, had a, we had an outstandingly productive meeting uh, a few moments, well, a few days ago, and I asked him to come and make a uh, couple of brief announcements regarding our opportunities to serve. And let me just say, segue this. How many of you used to play ball? Volleyball, basketball, football, any kind of ball. How many, how many of you played ball and the referees cheated like a dog from time to time? Amen. As a matter of fact, you would have been champion of whatever if you just got some justice on the, on the court and referees cheated like a dog. Amen. Well, you get a chance to rectify that. Tell them, Brother, Brother Evans, how they can fix it. All right. Thank you, Pastor. So I am so grateful to be here before you today to talk a little bit about why we need your support. So as Pastor mentioned, we offer youth sports programs. And a part of offering those youth sports programs, we like them to be volunteer-led. And so we're reaching out to our community to ask, how can you help us, right? So we are looking for volunteer coaches, referees, scorekeepers, all of the above. If you have a passion for young people who are looking to serve, we can help you. As you can see, we have a volunteer 
onboarding process where we'll get you trained, we'll check your background, we'll make sure you have all the resources you need in order to be an amazing volunteer for us. There are other opportunities outside of youth sports if you're interested. We have a youth team programs, we have an after school program as well as with our active older adults. What we're looking for is to bring our community in to help serve our community. We can't do it alone over at the Y, and so I'm looking forward to working with all of you to help make an impact in our community. Thank you. Great, great. So you need coaches? I need coaches. And you need referees. And I need referees. Right, and if, if I want to volunteer, what do I do again? So you can stop in or you can go to our website uh, and fill out our volunteer application, and we'll take it from there. What is your website? Our website is ymcahouston.org backslash West Orm. Or they can stop in next door at the Y. Or they can stop in next door. Or you'll be in the Connection Center right after the 10 o'clock service. Yes, I'll be in the Connection Center. I'm actually right on the hallway on the side. Or they put you in the hallway. They put me in the they hallway. They wouldn't let you in the Connection Center? I don't know. <laughs> get out of here. Well, I did get it. They, they showed me a lot of love after the last service, so I think that's a good spot. Oh, yeah. So were you happy out there? I was very happy okay, out there. So I'm right next to the birthday table. Birthday table? Yes. There's a birthday table out There's there? Table Whose birthday is it? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, who's at the birthday table? Well, they were taking pictures. I guess if it's your birthday this month, you stop by the table and there's a there's a bag for you. Get out of here! Yeah. When they start that? <laughs> Beats me. I've been here two months. <laughs> so, listen, y'all think we practice this? I'm dead serious. I had no idea there was a birthday table, and they take pictures out there. Yeah. Do, do they do they give away birthday presents too? I didn't look in the back, but there are bags on the table. They give him bags. Yeah, there's bags out there. They're not bags? We're not giving bags. They're not giving they're, bags. They're not giving bags. They only gave bags at eight? Celebrate for November. November. So did they get bags at eight? That's what I want to know. Yes or no? No. No. They're, they're so now, wait a minute. Now, you represent so the listen, Y. Now, you can't be I'm misrepresenting the table. the table. I'm looking. I asked what I had to do to, to get a birthday. And they were like, when's your birthday? I was in January. And they were like, oh, well, you can stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, since it's, I guess it's birthday month, it's every month a birthday month, with all November birthday people, please stand. All November birthday folk. Hi. All right. Otherwise known as the folk whose parents like February. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Happy birthday to you. And we look forward to seeing you after service at the birthday table. At the birthday and table. And Brother Evans will be next to the birthday table. And I will be next to the birthday All table. All right, good, good, good. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm glad we got that squared away. Yeah, indeed. All right. Let, let's thank the Lord for Sister Harris and Brother Evans. They did a great job. We appreciate y'all. Amen. Does everybody, oh, Lord, we have folks, those of us who are standing in the back, come on in. I'm so glad you're here. If there's a seat next to you, just raise your fist like that. Let's help the ushers see. We have plenty of seats. If there are five of you and you want to sit together, should have come at 950. Amen. Praise God. Right now, we ask you to just sit where you can and you're glad that you're here. And every seat in here is a blessed seat. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you. Does everybody have what they need? Amen. Uh, a couple of things since it's only 1035. Let me get off script here a little bit. I, I went to a conference this past weekend in Dallas. Uh, it was a men's conference. I very seldom go to men's conferences. As a matter of fact, as I recall, it may be my very first one. And they said two or three things, Brother, Brother Jefferson, that were very powerful, one of which I want to share with you today. He said the goal of a good father is not to raise a good son. He said the goal of a good father is to raise a good father. Similarly, the, rate, the goal of a good mother, the greater goal of a good parent, you get it. So I want to invite you to raise your children and think intergenerationally. Not, not just right here, right now, but what am I doing right now to raise my son or daughter for them to become a good parent? That will make the difference. Amen? How your neighbor say, that was for free. That was for free right there. Does everyone have what you need? Uh, good. Well, the ushers will provide whatever it is. I'm very excited about today's sermon. Um, and let me just go ahead and peep the whole card a little bit, worshiping warriors. I never noticed this, but in the 50th verse of the 24th chapter in the book of Luke, 
the blessing which began in the first chapter of Genesis, the 28th verse, continues through the first and the second testament. And that blessing ends up in the hands of Jesus. Hmm. And Jesus lifted his hands in that 50th verse of Luke 24, and he blessed them. Accordingly, it is my honor as pastor of Windsor Village Church. Any and every church represents the body, is the body of Christ responsible for extending the mission and meaning of Christ. Therefore, I lift my hands and I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you going out and you're coming in. I bless the fruit of your body and the fruit of your labor. May all who you are and all that you do give God unmitigated and unparalleled glory. I declare what God has already decreed. God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And he who has begun a good work in you is able to keep both you and the good work that he started in you until he comes again. Not by your power, not by your might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And let me throw this in. <laughs> With men and women, some things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So may the favor of the Lord that surrounds you like a shield surprise your enemies, confuse your family members, and defeat the evil in your life. In Jesus' name, your finances, your families, your future, your fellowship, all blessed in the name of Jesus who raised his hands and blessed them. Let all who agree say amen, amen. and hallelujah. hallelujah. The doors of the altar are open. We invite you to come with matters of your head and matters of your heart to the one true and living God who was, who is, and who is to come. Bring your lemons and your lemonade, your frustrations and your fulfillment. Bring your prayers and your praise report. In Jesus' name, amen.
So before I get uh, started, since we have a few attorneys in the house, including our own Pastor Mark Graffin Reed, who's sitting on the front row next to his wife, Dr. Graffin Reed, let me say that this sermon comes from the Lord through a guy named Mark Batterson. Mark Batterson uh, wrote the New York Times bestseller, Circle Maker, a while back. And more recently, he's written this book entitled Double Blessing. Somebody say Double Blessing. And I got no farther than the first chapter, really, which was the introduction. Ray Brady, what you doing here? Uh, not, got no farther than the first chapter when the Holy Ghost just arrested me. And uh, last week's Bible study and today's message comes from God through Mark Batterson to you. Those of us who are standing in the rear, I'd, I'd really be a lot more comfortable if you came on in and sat down, uh, including my own child. So if, 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 if there's a seat next to you, want you to try to raise your fist like this. You still have a few seats. Come on in. We appreciate you. And God bless you. Amen. Uh, I think I would like for us to just read one verse for right now. And let me just kind of warn you. We're going to read about 11 verses today. Uh, but we're going to lift up one right now. It's taken from the second verse of Deuteronomy in 2. Deuteronomy, second chapter. Let's just pitch our tent right there. Or better yet, I, I apologize. Let's do Genesis 1 and 28. Let's do Genesis 1 and 28. Um, as we discovered and discussed last Wednesday in Bible study, God spoke a blessing. This is real cool to me. And that one blessing weaved through the whole First Testament and then through the Second Testament. One blessing. This is the first time in God's word that the word blessed or blessing was written. And before we go any farther, blessing in Hebrew um, is the word barak. Uh, not quite like President Obama, but sort of like it. It's B-A-R-A-K, and it, and, it, and it means to bless one. It means to bless one. Amen? It doesn't just mean to receive a blessing. It means to be a blessing. Turn to somebody and say, you've been blessed, be blessed. to be a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So God said, then God did what? Then God did what? And God said to them, what? Be fruitful and multiply. If, if you don't mind, let's just, let's just stop right there at the semicolon. At that right there. Be fruitful and, well, it's on the screen. I was reading really. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and everything else, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, receiving, and doing of his written word. May his written word inspire and instruct us in our public and private lives. Let all who agree say amen, amen. and hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a believer, I'm not a doubter. I'm, I'm the head I'm and not the tail. I am above, I'm above. and not beneath. Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus did not die on the cross. And his father raised him up with all power in his hands for me to be down below. I know we're on World Wide Web. Aww. Walk around with my head between my legs. I am the head, I am the head. <laughs> not, the not the tail. I don't care what they say. <laughs> this is the word of God. This is the word of God. Oh, my bad. And I'm blessed, and I'm blessed. Not, cursed. not cursed, and every curse, and every curse. I mean every one of them, one. is in reverse and, and cancel. And this is the word of God. Word of I can God. have what it says. I can, I can do what it says. And thanks be to God, I can be who it says, in the name of Jesus, amen. Before you sit down, tell somebody, say, the umbrella blessing. When umbrellas were initially invented and used... They were only used by females. 
And I'm told that the umbrellas got started in London. So when it rained, you would only see women walking under umbrellas. Men would walk in the rain, but they'd get wet because <laughs> it was understood only women use umbrellas. At some point, however, a light bulb came on and a brother said, why am I getting wet for nothing? I think I'll use an umbrella. Hence, umbrellas. And we're walking umbrellas. Now, umbrellas can help to keep you from getting wet and protect you from the elements. But umbrellas have their restrictions, if you would. For instance, umbrellas cannot predict the weather. And once it starts raining, umbrellas cannot stop the rain. Furthermore, if the rain is coming in at a 45 or 90 degree angle hard, umbrellas, while designed to keep you from getting wet, may not keep you from getting wet. But umbrellas do help you to not get wet. Hunt your neighbor, say, here we go. <laughs> the blessing of God, without the S, blessing of God is like an umbrella. Because somebody here has been living long enough to know every now and then, life will rain pain. Life will rain trials and tribulations. Life will rain headaches and heartaches. The blessing of the Lord may not keep the pain and trials and tribulations from coming, but they sure will help protect you from the elements. Let me put it to you this way, and I'm going to run on. We can talk about this for a long time. Watch this. You ready? This is in your notes, but it's such a cool line. When you learn to walk under the umbrella God has provided for you, you are empowered to walk over the evil the devil wants to produce around you. Ah, I just said something like that. Let me say it right now one more time. When you walk under the protection that God has for you, then you are more able to walk over the satanic stuff that the devil tries to throw at you. In other words, great is he who is within you that is he who is in the world. In other words, when you walk under the blood of Jesus, trials and tribulations may still come, but you know without a shadow of a doubt, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, and Jesus has already overcome the trials and the tribulations. Turn to your neighbor, say, give me a high five, and let me declare what God has already decreed. Better yet, let me let this usher go ahead and seat these people. Amen. We've been, amen, praise God, because y'all looking at them and not up here. And I work too hard on this message <laughs> to be usurped by an usher, as much as I love the ushers. So if anybody else comes in, sit them in the back, please. Thank, thank y'all so much. This message, no, seriously, forget my hard work. The, 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 this message today is too important. And we had distractions. And you, you know when... The devil is teed off. Because we had some little distractions at eight, too. Just some little things that happened. Turn to your neighbor and say, you came to the right service. Anytime today. In Jesus' name. You're going to get blessed. Big time. As a matter of fact, let me just use that as a segue. Go ahead and ease on in. What is a blessing? Blessing is when God imparts a part of himself into you. His character, his competency, it's when God decides to infuse you with a piece of himself. When a problem gets solved, that's a manifestation of a blessing. When a body gets healed, that's a manifestation of a blessing. When you make A's and B's 
and particularly when you didn't even study for the doggone test. That's a manifestation of a blessing. Somebody didn't even study and you only knew 10% of the work, but what didn't the Holy Ghost just fix that test to only ask you that which you studied? If it had asked you anything else, your butt would have flunked. But because God bless you, you got your degree. Give God some praise right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, a blessing. Now let me go in, before I go any further to my next, my, my next little section, I want to tell you this. Sometimes God blesses you and the blessing is disguised. By the way, umbrella, for y'all can come on back now. Thank y'all so much. Let's thank the Lord for our umbrella people. The blessing is the skies. Every now and then, God allows, allows trials and tribulations to come. And we may ask ourselves, self, why is this happening to me? I got an extra five minutes, so let me take it. You know, sometimes we think more highly of ourselves than we are. And because we do, we ask ourselves too many questions that are focused on us. Instead of asking yourself, why are you allowing this to happen to me, God? Flip that thing around and say, God, how can you get glory as a result of what I'm going through? If you ask yourself that question, instead of the self-centered question, your outlook becomes transformed. But what I want to tell you is, even while you're going through the trials and tribulations, God can and will make you stronger during the trial and during the tribulation. Furthermore, if you claim to become like Christ, you want to be like Christ, how in the world are you going to be like Christ and get exempt from trials and tribulations? What made Christ Christ is that he endured the trials, overcame the trials, was more than a conqueror through the trial. How you gonna be more than a conqueror if you never have a battle? How you gonna be, be victorious if you never had a fight? How can we declare you victor if you never get in the ring? Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Don't, don't run around the ring. Don't skip over the ring. Get into the ring and God will fight your battle. Somebody say umbrella. So I says, I said, oh, how? In other words, and every now and then umbrella will malfunction. A lot of times, yeah, I will, baby. That's good. I'm, I'm going to get another boy. Wait. A lot of times we see God's blessing. I meant to say this eight and missed it. A lot of times we see the blessing of God as being like that umbrella. On the floor, closed, with somebody else's name on it. More, more specifically, we see it on the floor, closed, and we read. God will make them a great nation. God will make their name great. You'll be a blessing to all. And we think that's for somebody else. But I stopped by to tell you today two things. Number one, some, somebody bring me an umbrella. No, no, you keep yours, please. And number two, thank you very much. Today. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do, do you have one that's not Halloween colors? I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and first of all, I missed this at 8 too. Uh, it's amazing. I know when y'all saw us, you have another umbrella? <laughs> I know when some of y'all saw us open these umbrellas in church. Thank you so much. Some of y'all about had a cat with a helmet on. Because you say, oh my God, Dave, open an umbrella inside. Oh, that's bad luck. Your faith has got to be bigger than an open umbrella inside. Where, where in the Bible does it say 
if you open your umbrella inside, it's bad luck. Mama may have said it, Papa may have said it, and I love them, but God didn't say it. Therefore, but back to my point, a lot of us see blessings as happening back then, especially in the First Testament, and I promise you we're going somewhere. And it's back then. But I stopped by to tell you today, here's the second thing, that what God said back then is operative right now. And let me tell you why. Three reasons. Number one, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Pull up that Hebrew scripture, please. And some of you are thinking, well, pastor, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible doesn't say God the Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, we could talk about that for a little bit. Let me just say this. Remember, remember back in Genesis when he said, let us make mankind, including women, in our image? Well, guess who the what us were? God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So God the Son was present then, and he's still present right now. So what he declared back then is still operative right now. Turn to your neighbor, say, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So since he promised it back then, he's still promising it right now. So you can open up your umbrella of blessing. Number two, and we're going to spend a little time on this one, Ephesians. Ah, every spiritual blessing. In fact, read this with me, please. Blessed be the God and Father of whom? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Who what? Has blessed us with what? Some, most, a few, every, what? Where? Ah, let's take that one at a time. Let's start, start with that last prepositional phrase. Somebody say, in the heavenly places. In Christ. Yeah, some folk view that verse, excuse this $5 word, eschatologically. In other words, we, we think it pertains to life after death. It may, and it does, but it also applies right here and right now, existentially. And what that means is that every blessing that God has already spoken was initially spoken in heavenly places. It didn't start down here on earth. It started up in heaven. Are you still with me? And it may be a practical, tangible blessing now, but it started off as a spiritual blessing. In other words, your shoes started off as a spiritual blessing. Your car started off as a spiritual blessing. Your 401k began as a spiritual blessing. Why? Because all things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. If God spoke it and God made it happen, then it's spiritual because God is spirit. Everything you see in the first dimension began in the third dimension. Everything you see right here, right now, began in the in the dimension where you can not see. So everything you have is a result of a spiritual blessing. I went through that way too fast. I'm going to slow down now. Watch this. Therefore, you've got access to every spiritual blessing that God has ever spoken. Y'all didn't get that. You are entitled to every spiritual blessing that God has ever spoken. As a result of your being born again, every blessing that God has ever spoken is hereby accessible to you and you are entitled to it. I know you don't deserve it. I know it's hard for you to wrap your mind around it. I know you can only get it by grace, but that's how good God is. Everything God has promised is available and accessible to you. Your health, your wealth, your well-being, your house, your job, your peace of mind, your God confidence. Everything that the devil says you cannot have is exactly what God says you can have. 
and I know I'm on World Wide Web, I'm gonna keep it simple, but one of the ramifications and reverberations of slavery is that we as people of African ancestry who live in this country haven't become entirely too comfortable with the most of the worst and the least of the best and settling for second class and mediocrity and for lending. You are the head, that government, not the tail. You are above and not beneath. God didn't com produce you just to consume. He produced you to produce. In the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, the first time God spoke, he blessed them. I said he blessed them and he said, what? Be fruitful. Now, some folk read that and then they immediately think children. Well, it may include children, but it's not exclusive to children. And let me help you. When Jesus said, huh, abide in me, uh-huh, I'm the vine, you're the branches, you'll bear much fruit. You don't think about children when you read that. The same fruit that Jesus talks about in John, he talks about it because God the Father decreed it back in Genesis. And it's not just having children. It's about bearing fruit of God's glory. I say fruit of God's glory. Oh, God's going to mess with somebody right now. I decree and declare you shall be full of God's glory. You shall be full of God's glory. You shall be full of God's glory as a warrior, as a worshiper, in your finances, in your family. You shall declare what God has already decreed and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And God spoke to them and said, be fruitful. I decree and declare you shall be fruitful. Every step you take will be a step of fruitfulness. Everything you lay your hands on will be a manifestation of fruitfulness. Everything you put your mind to, because you got the mind of Christ, is going to produce fruit. No more lack of productivity. No more inefficiency. No more mediocrity. Fruit, 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 fruit. Give somebody a high five. Say, I got fruit. 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 And my real estate investments, fruit. And the stock market, fruit. And my child rearing, fruit. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Why? Because God said, be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. It's a spiritual blessing. Back to Ephesians. It's a spiritual blessing. The blessings are yours. You can open your umbrella of blessing. Number one, because he keeps the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number two, this is hard for some folk to wrap their minds around. I understand. It's your spiritual right Whoo! to receive the spiritual blessing. It's your birthright. As you know, pastors that have three, three children. They're getting old now. It's still true now. It was more true then. They didn't have to ask for food. At least three times a day, Pastor Suzette or somebody provided them with food. It was their natural Caldwell birthright. They were born into the family. God bless us with five dollars and a little bit more. So every time it was time to eat, they were able to eat. You're God's children. You're king of the king, in fact. You're Lord of the Lord. You've got protection. So therefore, every time it's time for you to eat, you shall eat of the goodness of the Lord. You don't have to settle for crumbs or second class. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm first class. 
I'm top draw. I know I don't deserve it, but that's what grace is all about. Give God Bless is mentioned over 350 times in the First Testament. We'll come back to that. Third reason why you can open up your umbrella blessing. Ooh-wee. I like this. All, some of his promises, a few of his promises, a couple of his promises, all of his promises are what? I've got a what? A yes. And in him, what? Amen. Amen. He wouldn't have said it if it was a no. And yes and amen means it's already done. I said amen means it's already done. Now remember this because we're going to put something on you in a minute. Amen means it's already done. Turn to your neighbor and say it's already done. For what purpose? For what purpose? To the glory of God through whom? Through us. So as we wrap up this part, look look out now. You're walking on the umbrella of blessing with integrity. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All his promises are yes and amen. Every blessing that God has ever spoken is your spiritual birthright. You got that? It's on your notes, but I want you to get it. You get it? Let's seal it with three seconds of praise. And here we go. One, two, three. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Well, watch this. Somebody say, well, Pastor, as you go to the next part of your little message, that works pretty well for the clergy in here. That works pretty well for the prayer ministry in here. That works pretty well for the folk who've been saved in here since 1776. Pastor, I just got saved. I'm a neophyte Christian. And on top of that, I got, I got stuff. I got mess. I, I got some things in my life I'm not proud of. Woo! Have I got some good news for you. Let's turn to Lamentations. Third chapter. Kicking in about that 22nd verse. Some of y'all didn't know there was a book called Lamentations. And, it, and it's really a book of sadness, but right here, you find some good news. Through the Lord's mercies, oh Lord. Now, all the folk who have processed their stuff can celebrate. Those of you who are trying to still get through it in in denial, you might have to take a little minute. We are not consumed because his compassions fail not. In other words, you might not admit everything you've done, but God remembers. And God chooses to put his compassion over your stuff so he can forget that you did it. Now don't get confused. He didn't get amnesia. He still remembers you did it, but he just treats you like you didn't. Like you didn't do it. And his compassion never failed. But this is what I really love on top of that. 23rd verse. They are new. Every morning, great is Woo! Every day you get up, you see mercies that you didn't have yesterday. Then tomorrow when you get up, you see some more mercies you didn't have today. And check this. Are you ready for this? I say, are you ready for this? It, it doesn't just mean new mercies as in mercies you've never seen. In Hebrew, it also means different mercies, new and different mercies. In other words, it's not the same strands, S-T-R-A-I-N-S, of mercies every day. You get some new mercies. What you talking about, Pastor? Well, God knew that when you were nine years old, you need one set of mercies. At 19 years old, you need a whole new set of mercies. At 29 years old, you need even some different mercies. At 39 years, you got my drift. Every day you get up, it's not just different mercies, it's brand new. 
what kind of God provides you with new different mercies every day so the stuff of your past is wiped out God has wiped it out you ought to forget about it and move on give somebody about a high five and say I thank God for new mercies each and every day some of y'all are not thankful your co-workers may hold stuff against you your former spouse may hold stuff against you but God says Oh no, that's a new board. Every day you get up, a brand new board. Every day you get up, brand new opportunities. Every day you get up, a brand new slate. Every day you get up, a brand new opportunity to give God glory. Every day you get up, your stuff is wiped out behind you and God gives you a brand new. Woo! Oh my God, oh goodness. We got some great students sitting up here. You know, if you flunk your midterm and pass your final, depending on the weight of the midterm, you could end up making a C in the class, even though you made an A in the final. But in God's mind, you could flunk every day of the course, but save be to God if you huh, are accepted by God on your last day like that thief hanging on the cross you made an A in the class can't nobody I said this two weeks ago I'm going to say it one more time and this message is almost over Somebody ought to thank God for his mercies right now. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. And you're thankful because he had mercy on you because you didn't marry the person you thought you loved. You just saw him about two weeks ago. And you said, oh, I'm so glad. You saw him at the store. I'm glad I didn't. You didn't say it out loud, but you said to yourself, thank God I didn't marry you when I thought I wanted to. Because if I had married you when I thought I wanted to, then my life be looking like yours. But by the mercy of God, I was at Heartbreak Hotel for three months when you quit me. But I thank you right now for quitting me. Cause if I had hung on to you, my stuff be doo-doo right up off at him. But because of the mercy. I can open my umbrella with integrity. Cause God's the same yesterday today and forever because all the spiritual blessings all belong to me all his promises are yes and amen and I can keep my umbrella blessed open because his mercies are new every day I got two more things I want to share with you Jer Jeremiah will tell you this he's looking for somebody to bless Turn to your neighbor and say, Jeremiah says, in Jeremiah 1 and 12, God's looking. Oh, my bad. Thank you, Vision. Well, well, ho, 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 hold that. Thank you. Might as well. That's not the point, but that's, that's a good one. It's on your notes. Woo! He's ready to perform his word. I said he's ready to perform his word. He has spoken his word. Now he's ready to perform his word. In addition to that, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says he's looking for somebody to bless. This is incredible to me. He's looking for somebody to bless. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the winds of the village, the whole earth, to show himself strong 
on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. What does that mean? If you are loyal to God, you love him with your whole heart, God is looking for you because he wants to bless you. I say he's looking for you because he wants to bless you. Now give somebody a high five. Say, you won't believe this. Not only is he looking for somebody to bless him. Hey, watch this now. You've seen this. Prophet, Psalm 23rd, 23rd Psalm. I think it's about the sixth verse. You, you, you know how it goes. It says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I've preached this before with goodness and mercy follow me. But Mark Batterson, I will give him credit, says something in his book that I'm going to take to my grave. The word follow in Hebrew doesn't just mean they're walking behind you. The word follow in Hebrew means they hunting me down. It's a military term. It's a hunting term. It's a war term. It means the farther I try to go and the faster I try to run, I cannot outrun goodness and mercy. They just hunting me down. I can't go anywhere without goodness and mercy hunting me down. Even when you don't see me, goodness and mercy are still hunting me down. Even when I can't see myself, goodness and mercy are still hunting me down. Now, some of y'all been thinking, the devil's got a bullseye on my back. Turn that thought around. God has a blessed bullseye on your back, and he's hunting you down. He's targeting you for a blessing right now. Somebody say, here I am, Lord. Target me for a blessing right here and right now. Now, you know what I like to? Every now and then, goodness might wear thin. Might wear thin. Oh, but thank God. Every day, you got brand new mercies that hold you, hold you up. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to kind of smell ourselves. We think we got something going on. And we begin to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Because there's so much goodness in our career and so much goodness in our family. But God said to somebody, you are only good because I'm good. You're only doing it because I've already done it. But for the mercies of God, there would be no goodness. Give somebody a high five for his goodness. Give somebody a high five for his mercy. Woo! Woo! Goodness. And mercy. Shall follow me. All. The days of my life. Everywhere I go, goodness, mercy, right there. We gotta move on. This is particularly applicable for those who know you don't deserve. God loves us enough 
God is so much in the blessing business. He blesses us even when we don't deserve it. One more thought about this and we run on when we get to the real sermon. In fact, this would really, really be a good time to ask somebody to come because somebody knows God's been good to you. And you are yet even alive because of goodness and mercy. And they've always been there with you. But at some point, you, like the prodigal son, Got to come to your right mind. Turn around and accept and embrace the blessing of God. You know, you 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 ought to get tired of running and decide, you know what? Instead of running from God, I'm going to run to God. Instead of rejecting God, I want to accept God. And we're going to speak some blessings and get out of here by 1131. But there are five people, at least, who are being led to come, not right, but right. Right now. R-A-T now. And look, whether you join the church or not, it's your call. Whether you join this church or not, it's your call. But if you know God is calling your name, come on down. There are three more, minimum, excuse me. Three more, minimum. Three more, minimum. God bless you, my man. Bless you, sir. How many is that, please? Four? There's one more. You don't want to miss this window. This window may not remain open. This opportunity may not remain. You want to seize this moment. Let me repeat. Whether you join this church or not is inconsequential. The main thing is for you... To make your move. Turn around and say, God, I thank you for the umbrella of blessing you've placed over my life. And before I speak a blessing, I don't know this this brother's walking. You have a distinguished walk. as one who has also walked distinguishedly. I empathize. And with you too, my sister, and I I declare what God has decreed, that the blessings of the Lord shall overtake you. Just like Psalm 23 and 6 says, grace, goodness, and mercy shall follow them, shall ambush them, pursue them, target them. The blessing of the Lord shall overtake you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Start with the second verse, please. Then we go to Numbers and we out. (laughs) And I raise my hand. (laughs) 
as Jesus raised his hands, fulfilling the ancient tradition of the priest. And all these blessings huh, shall come upon you. And look at that, and overtake you. Why? Because you obey. Not just hear, you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herd. In other words, blessed shall be your portfolios. Blessed shall be your, producti your productivity in the workplace. All mid-high, senior high, college, elementary school children, blessed shall be the produce of your mental work. And you shall excel and exceed and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No demon in hell or no racist on earth shall be able to prevail over the blessing of the Lord which has already been decreed and has now been declared over these the people who are called by God's name. The increase of our cattle and the offspring of our flocks. Blessed shall be our kneading bowls. Blessed shall be our basket. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you come out. No bullets, no police brutality. No car accident, no drugs, no premarital sex shall usurp or abort the purposes of God's blessing in your life. In Jesus' name. And now, according to Numbers, 24th verse. And for those of us who are walking in a tunnel, for those of us who are confused, for those of us who are standing at the crossroads of life, not knowing which way to go. Know that this blessing was spoken while the children were in the wilderness. God said, don't worry, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to keep you. I'm going to make my face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. Give you my favor. And the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom and all will be well. I speak shalom over the brothers and sisters who are standing at this altar and the power and purpose and provision and protection of God shall prevail in and over your lives. In Jesus' name. Let all who are in Greece say yes, yes. and uh, amen. amen. We got to go. But now, <laughs> unto him. Who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne? Power, glory, honor, dominion are ascribed to you, O God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's thank the Lord for these who have come. I'm going to ask you to please follow the new membership secretary, if you would. I'm going to ask the members to please not run over these brothers and sisters who are walking following the new membership secretary. And before you run out and sign up, with Brother Evans out there next to the birthday table. If any of these blessings 
resonate with you today and you hear God saying, today's your day. Before you run to your car and before you go watch the Texans game, come down and touch this altar as I'm doing right now. Say, Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Let's thank our umbrella specialists. And know that you're walking under the blessing of the Lord. There may be some elements falling, but you are protected in Jesus' name. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Thank you so much for coming. See you next week and Wednesday night. Hey! Appreciate you.